Hello and welcome to Beside the Point, a little something extra apart from our regular program. And We're we have a special. So special... extra. So extra. I love extra. <laughs> <laughs> it should go across screen. So extra. <laughs> We have a special guest with us today, Richard Elliott, the Executive Director of the Canadian HIV AIDS Legal Network. Welcome Hi, back, Richard. Richard. Thank you. Hey, Richard. Um, when you were on the show a few weeks ago, you were here to talk about the issue of HIV criminalization. Obviously, you work in the area of HIV AIDS law. Um, you're a lawyer. I am. So how did you? Don't hold, how did, huh? Don't hold against me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, how did you get? Uh, how did you get into this kind of law? Like, how did you start in that? Uh, the organization area? I now run actually was founded while I was in law school, which was great for me because I went to law school to do social justice work around LGBT issues and HIV related stuff. Um, so it was a great opportunity uh, that just came at the right moment. And for 25 years now, we've been advocating for the rights of people who live with HIV and also for various communities that are particularly affected by HIV. So obviously, gay men, sex workers, people who use drugs, people in prison, et cetera. Right. I, it, uh, when, when, when you were on last, uh, a lot of the issues around HIV criminalization uh, were around the issue of stigma, uh, the stigma of being HIV positive. I actually kind of thought, and maybe different people see it differently, that we had moved beyond that. I mean, now, you know, people are undetectable. And no, but straight people don't know that stuff. I didn't yeah. know but straight until people I still did have this. that stigma. Straight people are like, not my problem. Until I was on the point and I met people Nobody who were HIV positive positive and I learned about it and understood, I had the same misconceptions. I didn't know, mm. you know, because that information is not as out there as the, like, you know, the sky is falling information and fear tactics right. from, you know, the 80s and 90s. Like, you know, so, so that was what I had always been told and as a straight person it's you, know, you don't get access to that information as prevalently so well and if you think about how often HIV appears in the media now what is the dominant story you hear about HIV it's an allegation Tragic. of criminal prosecution yeah. right that's what hits the news story the, the news true, media people aren't talking that's about it the, otherwise that's the image exactly. of HIV that is so dominant now and so it's not a surprise that HIV stigma is reinforced by that, which then, of course, means that it's harder for people to go get tested because there's all the stigma surrounding HIV on top of the fear of what the result might be, fear of corrupt prosecution. So this is actually a sort of vicious cycle that's undermining public health. So unfortunately, we're not free of HIV stigma, and that includes in the gay community. We still, unfortunately, have a lot of well, HIV uh, okay. stigma among because, gay men, too, uh, right? I was curious if it's different uh, in the gay community versus in the straight community. Um, uh, particularly women who are at risk, um, are, are, are the, uh, in the African American community, are, are there different levels of stigma in the different communities? I don't know if you can quite quantify it that yes. way. I think there, I mean, stigma manifests in a lot of different ways in different communities, and there can be like community specific manifestations of stigma, mm -hmm. but I think no community is really immune, yeah. unfortunately, from you, HIV you, stigma. You actually said yes. Yeah, the stigma of HIV AIDS is so um, still very prevalent within the black community, and it's still directed towards um, the LGBT community. That's yeah. what I think the majority of the community thinks is if you have if you ha if you're gay, there's a possibility that uh, you will get it, or vice versa. If you have it, then you're most likely get perceived as more likely to, etc. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's still continuing. I don't yeah, think that's any, really has. Any, I don't think that's changed. Any stigma is usually like plays into the same kind of right. marginalization right. power dynamics. That so if you're like in communities of color, also like Muslim communities or religious communities or whatever, yeah. it probably plays a different role. It's and always it another right? The same kind of yeah, levels not of. Only that. of what oppression. you just said is like if somebody is HIV, like they will assume they're gay. Is what you just said. Absolutely. And I, I obviously can't speak on behalf of everybody, but from what I've seen, <laughs> but I am, I am. Right now I am though. And giving you the down low. <laughs> How have the legal issues around HIV AIDS changed over the years? Like now we're talking about criminalization, but that wasn't what was talked about 20 years ago. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I would say probably in the early phases of the epidemic, the legal issues that were more prevalent and getting more attention were just sort of flat out in your face discrimination against people based on their HIV status, real or like perceived. Like being fired for... Yeah. 
um, related assumptions, to go back to what you were just saying about you know the association always yeah. between HIV and sexual orientation or HIV and drug use, for example. Um, you know, though that sort of discrimination right, was more in your face, um, which is maybe not surprising. That has improved somewhat. You know, we've actually achieved some measure of legal protection for people against discrimination based on HIV status and other things, although that work is still in progress as well. Um, and then in more recent years, things like HIV criminalization have uh, surged as the number of prosecutions began to mount, mm. as the legal pathway in Canada anyway became clearer for how prosecutors could go after people. Um, that also, I think, contributed to uh, a mounting number of cases. Uh, so there have, been, there have been shifts in legal issues. But I mean, there are any number of other HIV-related legal issues that we need to talk about as well, right? Like all the stuff around harm reduction and access to harm reduction services, sterile injection equipment, including in prisons. I mean, it's not just about sex. It's mm -hmm. also about drug use, right? Um, the HIV stigma that still surrounds sex work, for example, and the ways in which our laws around sex work are putting sex workers' uh, health and safety at risk. So, I, I mean, I, I, I would have thought that things have gotten better. Oh, then I, I hear you talking, and it's have. like, oh my God, they're not. Uh, uh, have they? They, they, they have. On better. balance, yeah, things have not gotten better. Be. Um, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of human rights advocacy, um, and that has had a real impact. And that's, we shouldn't discount that, but that doesn't mean the work is done, right? I mean, the sort of the things that we still have in our immigration law, which hopefully we'll get rid of soon, that actually keep people uh, with HIV from being able to immigrate to Canada, for example, based on outdated science and very certain kinds of racist assumptions. You know, we got to work on that. There's any number of things that we still got to deal with um, in HIV-related law, and criminalization is a big one. Right. So, how do we, if there's still that stigma, what do we need to do, legally, societally, socially, to, to keep us moving in the right direction. Make a talk show about it. Well, yeah. <laughs> we're trying. Yeah. We're trying. Check mark, that's Check mark. I think it's just information. Are we good? Are we like, good? Honestly, you just have to spread information. People yeah. don't know, then they're just gonna keep thinking the same thing about it. Yeah, because even I'm learning right now. Like, I didn't know um, that the law has changed, which is good to know. And so yeah, I'm some laws well. changed for the better, yeah. and some laws have been changing. Yeah. For the worse. For the worse, Either way, right? didn't know. So, <laughs> I have this reservations is about deciding or assuming or, or pre making the presumption that things in a certain you know area and marginalized part of society is getting better if I'm not affected by it like I want to be like oh no black it out black people have it so easy these days no I don't know <laughs> I can't say that the answer is no I'm not, yeah I'm not black and I don't have HIV <laughs> the so answer is I no. can't really go on saying but right. things have gotten better but, you know what um, I mean uh, I mean you work in a lot of different issues related to HIV AIDS um, I assume a lot of that a lot of those issues are dealt with on your website they are uh, many issues on our website, aidslaw.ca, everything from criminal law to immigration to privacy rights to testing issues, women's rights, indigenous communities. Heated discussions happening in those comment sections? Uh, <laughs> well, we disable the comment yeah. section. Okay, I'm just like, yeah, you but, probably but should do that. Don't That's usually so get heard all our productive commentary. But we don't, so let us know what you think. Uh, the point Bring guys the fight here. at gmail.com. And your website, once again? Aidslaw.ca. Great, thank you very much. Once again, Richard Elliott, the Executive Director of the Canadian HIV AIDS Legal Network. Happy holidays. And to you. Um, and we will see you next time yeah. on The Point.